Hi, I'm Bill Sanders, and uh, today what I want to talk about are two things. First of all, we're going to take a look at the operators used in arithmetic uh, operations. These are these are pretty simple, but I thought it uh, would be a good idea to go over them uh, quickly. That'll just take a couple minutes. Um, more importantly, what I want to do is on the uh, object-oriented programming side is to take a look at how objects uh, communicate with each other. And the most basic object is one that we're going to call the client. And this is for making requests for something from another object. So uh, we're going to use the mathematical uh, operators as something that you can ask for, do this operation or do that operation. And this uh, a class is going to take care of care of it. Okay, um, so this is going to be uh, uh, sort of fun, I think, um, especially if you're not used to programming uh, in OOP. Today I'm going to talk about uh, arithmetic operators in PHP. We're only going to use the six basic ones right now, and they're pretty straightforward. First of all is what's called a negation, and that's simply a minus sign. And if you put this minus sign in front of a number or variable, it makes it the negative value. For example, if you start off with A of the value of 2, and then you assign the negation of that variable to another variable, then you end up with a minus 2. Addition is used as a plus sign. That's the operator for it. And that's pretty straightforward. Subtraction uses a minus sign. The multiplication uses an asterisk. Most computer languages uh, will use an asterisk for multiplication. And division is used by a slash. Now, the slash is the one you're supposed to use is the one that's right below the question mark on your keyboard. I've seen that slash referred to as both a backslash and a regular slash. So. Rather than trying to figure out which is which, I'll just say it's the slash on your keyboard below the question mark. Finally, there's what's called the modulus. And the modulus operator is a percent sign. And the percent sign refers to the remainder of a division. So, for example, if you have A equal 5 and B is equal to the value of the expression A modulus 2, the value would be 1. That is to say is that when you divide 5 by 2, uh, you have a remainder of 1. And so when you need just a remainder, you use a modulus. One of the most important things about object-oriented programming is the communication between classes. The most basic type of communication is that one class or one object requests something from another class or object. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to take a look at how this is set up, what it seems to be, and then we're going to take the materials that we had in the um, arithmetic operations and, and see a simple example of how to use them. The basis of object-oriented programming is objects communicating with one another. You have a requesting class that will make a request to different objects, and that object can request something to another object and so forth. But at the very base of it is a request that's handled by what we'll call a specialized class. And this leads to the principle is that each class should only have a single responsibility. And here we have an example. There's math that only does math. And we have a text class that only does text formatting. Uh, here's a sort of an image of it. Uh, here's something that uh, doesn't probably work too well. It's not very functional. So, yeah, you can get a lot of different things into a single class, but it doesn't mean it's a good idea. Okay. Um, we're going to call the classes making a request the client. Uh, just like you'd have a client server, 
your client makes a request to a server, it returns a web page. Uh, with this, you have a client request uh, something from another class and it returns whatever is requested. In this particular case, we have a the client is requesting a method from a math class. Uh, by the way, all of this stuff, uh, you can uh, download the uh, or copy the all of the code for all of this at www.php5dp.com. Okay, so let's start with the class that we're making a request from. This is the class we're calling Easy Math, and one of the methods um, is called do add. Now, this method, or here as we use the term function, has two parameters, and the parameters are simply some variable that you put in, and the parameters can expect any number of things. So uh, here we call one alpha and the other one beta. And uh, when the request is made, there are some actual values uh, that are substituted for alpha and beta. And then what this little method does, it adds them together and returns it to the requester. So in this case, it just returns a sum of those two values. Now, when we look at the request, it's pretty, uh, this one is very simple. We have a, uh, this is done within a constructor function. It can be any function or any method. And we have, uh, we create an object first. Uh, here we're going to call our object math. And so that asks for a new easy math uh, object. And then one of the methods of that object we've just created is called do add. And uh, what we do is we use a little dash and an arrow to indicate a connection. Uh, between the object and one of its properties or one of its methods. In this case, uh, it's a method because, well, you can tell methods uh, because they have a parameter that either expects nothing or expects some kind of arguments. Now, in this particular case, we had two parameters uh, we called alpha and beta in the do add method. And so here we put in arguments. Now, arguments are simply uh, actual content. So here, here we have 7 and 22 and uh, this request will re be returned back to the client as the addition or the sum of those two values. Okay, let's take a look at the actual program. Uh, here what I have, uh, we have the same one set up. It makes a request and it wants to add these two numbers and so it requests the uh, map object to go ahead and add them and when we uh, look at this uh, it adds them up to 396. Now if we want we can change it to something else. I think originally we had 7 and 22 and we'll just uh, put those back in. We'll save it and we'll run it again and now we have 29. So it, it becomes very very handy and what you'll find is that when you start using object-oriented programming more and more, you'll begin to see the, the real value of it also, too. One of the most important things about it is that the values start showing up when your programs get bigger and bigger and bigger. A lot of times when you have a small program you're using, oop, you just, well, oh my god, this is way too much work. But um, it's not that much work, and uh, it's sort of cool, and also when you get to big programs, uh, you'll be glad you had it.